the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Louis Butko. Yes, it is Tie Cats Today for a Monday, September the 26th, 2022. And uh, I appreciate you joining us here on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Um, yeah, that, that one stung on Friday night. Not going to lie, as the Tie Cats uh, drop one to the Montreal Alouettes, fall to 4 and 10 on the season and uh, hit their third and final bye week of the season. Uh, we're going to hear from Coach Joe as he spoke after the game. We'll hear from Dane Evans as well. And uh, we'll get a recap with Coach Sal, John Salvantis, for some Monday salutations. Uh, but yeah, the Ticats drop this one. They drop four points back in the Montreal Alouettes. It's not over. I'm not doom and gloom here. Uh, you know, I, I want to be optimistic and, uh, the, the, the Tigers didn't play bad, which is, you know, good to see, uh, but they didn't play well enough to win the game. And Keandre Smith, obviously a tough lesson, uh, that he's going to learn. And, uh, we'll hear from Dane as he, uh, what he said and, uh, about that. And, uh, again, coach Sal joining us as well here on Ty Cats today. And, uh, if you listen regularly, you may realize I'm always astonished by, Something like the passage of time, whether it's a, a Friday, uh, wondering where the week has gone, or, or in this case, uh, wondering how we've gotten into the last week of September. Uh, and yeah, the third and final bye week of the season and about to hit the final month of the season. Uh, before that, though, October 7th, uh, it is the hall, the Wall of Honor game uh, as Danny McManus uh, will be Honored and uh, will join a, a great list of of Tie Cats legends uh, in the Wall of Honor. And before that, there's actually a dinner uh, that's going to be held. Uh, it's the Wall of Honor ceremony, and uh, that'll be happening the night before at Carmen's Banquet Center. And lots going on. Um, Darren Flutie is already committed to attending. Rod Hitchcock, Mike Morial, will be there, of course. Uh, Morial and Hitch, by the way, new episode dropping this week of that show. Uh, but also, and not to you know. Uh, you know, take 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 anything away from the the Wall of Honor, but it's also the 50th reunion of the 1972 Grey Cup champion team. So Bob Kraus is going to be there, Garney Henley, Chuck Ealy, uh, and Tony Gabriel, who we're actually going to connect with uh, coming up later this week here on Tie Cats today. So yeah, it's the bye week, but uh, I am here all week. Uh, I took a couple of days off last bye week. I I I, I just. Didn't do it this time for some reason, uh, but I'll be here all week, so uh, you can catch your uh, daily dose of Tie Cats fix right here on Tie Cats Day. Uh, let's go back to Friday night. Let's hear from the head coach of the Tie Cats. Here's what Orlando Steinauer said after the game, and I, again, I guess I should have mentioned this off the top. Uh, Roddy Randall Jr., obviously a, a, an awful sight to see him stretchered off the field, but uh, it was great to hear that uh, it was it was precautionary uh, and then he flew back with the team as scheduled uh, he tweeted about it as well so uh, great to see that uh, Rodney Randall Jr. appears to have avoided any serious injury because that was a scary sight and uh, coach was asked about that uh, after the game on Friday. Puts everything in perspective real quick and uh, you know immediately I just wanted somebody to get up to his wife in the stands and uh, inform her of what was going on it's uh, it's one of those things you're not prepared for. You know, you're, you're, you're really not, you know, knees and elbows and those type of things happen. Uh, when you're carted off, uh, that's a different level. Just overall, we weren't good enough. Uh, you know, we did a lot of great things, uh, you know, felt like we didn't help ourselves. You know, it took too many penalties uh, in key situations, um, you know, turned the ball over there late. You know, at the, you know we knew it was going to be a back and forth game. And just, just disappointed in that, right? You know, you're always going to credit the other football team, but I felt like we had opportunities uh, to make our own way, and sometimes we couldn't get out of our own way. Yeah, we did. You know, we, we got to come away with, with touchdowns. We were a little bit flat in that third quarter coming out, um, and they were able to sustain some drives. And, you know, I wouldn't call it a stiff win, but there was a breeze. And uh, we got to find a way to, you know, I thought we had a big defensive stop there to keep the game uh, where we needed to keep it. Um, yeah, we, we definitely need to score more points, but we also got to get some more key stops uh, down there when they're in the red zone. Yeah, I thought Dane played solid. I thought he did a, a decent job. I was excited to watch him try to close out this drive here at the end, and it uh, just didn't work out for us, and that's disappointing. But I thought, I thought Dane was extremely solid uh, despite 
you know, we took a couple of shots on first and 10, so you're going to be in second and long. And, you know, we got to find a way to make a couple of those plays, not for him, but for our football team. Um, just tonight, we just weren't good enough. Wes ran hard again. Yeah, Wes was downhill. Thought he did a great job uh, pounding the rock, falling forward. Um, you know, so proud of him, proud of the offensive line. Thought they fired off. But, um, again, there were some timely penalties that uh, in a game like this, you, you just can't afford to make. Uh, you just got to be more consistent. And that is the head coach and president of football ops of the Ticats, Orlando Steinauer, and talking there about, uh, yeah, penalties. Uncharacteristic uh, of the Ticats to, to be taking so many penalties. 12 penalties for 130 yards. So that's a, that's a huge chunk uh, of, of the, the field. 130 yards, 12 penalties, and, uh, yeah, the Ticats uh, – Obviously need to be better on that one uh, moving forward in the final four games of the regular season. Yeah, final four games down the stretch. Here we go. All right, let's hear from Dan Evans. Here's what he had to say after the game. Yeah, um, I honestly don't even – I know where we stand, but, you know, it's now the power's kind of out of our hands. It's People got to start losing. Things got to happen. Um, but we're, we're not going to fall apart in this locker room. We're going to stay together. Um, I don't have any doubt about that. And uh, we just got to look at the film. This one's going to be a tough one to watch for sure. We had a lot of missed opportunities. Um, we had a lot of penalties, which is pretty uncharacteristic for us, especially key ones. Um, and Montreal got after it. Like, I'm not trying to take anything away from them. So um, it's going to hurt to watch this one back. Uh, well, yeah, it wasn't tonight. If they had 15, we'd be yeah, saying sure. it was good enough. But, um, yeah, no, we had, we had a chance to go win the game. And Keandre is trying to make a play. Um, I, I feel bad for him just because he's a young guy, you know. Um, I, that's happened to me before. It's happened to me this season, trying to make a play. Um, I, I'm going to be there for him. I'm going to be there for my teammate. Um, I totally understand what he's doing. Obviously, he's going to learn from it. Um, but, I mean, I, I'm telling you, we were going to go score. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. Like, I, I really feel like we were going to score on the next play or, or like, in the coming plays. But um, we finally had momentum back on our side, and we kind of just lost it in an instant. So, yeah, 16 wasn't enough tonight. Um, yeah, uh, we were talking about in the locker room. We just got to figure out a way to win on the road. Um, every time we build some momentum at home, we go on the road and we lose it, you know. So uh, I don't know if we got to start sitting in different seats on the plane or what, but um, we just we got to figure out how to win on the road. And that is Dane Evans, and uh, spoken like a true leader there as he uh, talks about uh, you know not leaving anyone behind and this team uh, obviously still playing for each other and yeah it's now playoffs aren't out of the question Ticats still have a chance it's uh, mathematically still possible and uh, it starts with a huge game against Saskatchewan uh, next week on October the 7th touchdowns and tastings presented by Peller Family Reserve is back get some friends together and register for a group for this fun filled evening Thursday September 29th at Tim Hortons Field the evening will be hosted by Natalie Sexton along with Ticats alumni Andy Fantuz and Mike Daly and includes wine tasting by Peller Family Reserve on field football instruction from current Ticats players a Ticats locker room tour and gift bag plus two tickets to an upcoming home game of your choice all for only 95 bucks a person Visit Ticats.ca for more details. All right, let's uh, let's get more on uh, Friday's game. Look ahead. Very pleased to be joined now by the uh, coach Sal, John Salavantis, for some Monday salutations. And uh, coach, uh, Ticats didn't play poorly, uh, but they didn't play well enough to win the game. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Louis. Uh, I thought they played, uh, you know, fairly well. Uh, Dane Evans, uh, 22 of 29, uh, 288 yards. Uh, that's a pretty good outing. No interceptions, but also no TDs. And, uh, you know, I, I thought the running game, they, they've got to learn to trust that running game. I mean, between early and uh, Erlington and Hills, uh, they had 12 carries between them. They ever, they got 80 yards. Hmm. And when you're on the goal line and you got a big back like Hills, I think you have to use him and, and uh, not be afraid to use him. So I think they got to learn to trust uh, that run game that they have. But the downfall to me was, was the fact turnovers and penalties. Mm. And then you add the injuries on top of that. Pappy White going out real early. He was to be the punt returner. Uh, he goes out early in the ballgame. And then, of course, the injury to Randall. So, you know, they had a lot to overcome. Uh, they just couldn't get it done. 
Yeah. And I mean, injuries might be the story of the season when we look back and, uh, you know, we see Dylan win on the six game injured list, the time Simone has spent and, and the offensive line back to the run game, the offensive line, again, they're, they're showing some promise, uh, you know, back-to-back games, keeping Dane upright for the most part. And like you said, uh, allowing Wes Hills and Sean Thomas Erlington uh, to, to establish uh, some run game, so, an encouraging sign for sure uh, for some consistency at that spot. I, I agree with you. I think the consistency comes from, playing the same people in the same roles uh, for more than one uh, series in one week. I, I thought they did a good job of stretching the field with the uh, double tight formation, full back one side, extra lineman on the other side. Uh, all in all, you know, the old line is coming along. I did feel uh, in my mind that the uh, defensive line didn't apply the kind of pressure I thought they should or could apply in that game. Harris was 26 of 35 in the ball game, 244 yards, two TDs. And, and they didn't get him off that spot. You know, he's a kind of a quarterback that's going to sit in one place and throw the ball. And I thought Montreal's first down production was really good. Uh, they got themselves into a place where they could bring in uh, the big uh, uh, quarterback and sneak for, for first downs. So uh, all in all, you know, uh, again, I, I just uh, I was expecting more from the defensive line. Yeah. And defensively in general, uh, I, I, we heard coach talk about it post game. Uh, he said, you know, the offense, yeah, they need to score touchdowns, but the defense needs to make plays. And, and you know, we talked about the injuries that they're dealing with. Um, Randall going down, obviously a huge loss. If you're if you're on this bye week on, in your defense, I mean, what, what's it going to look like come? October 7th, the next time they take the football field. What are you expecting to see? Well, you know, uh, that's difficult to say because of the injury situation as to who's going to play and who's not going to play. But at the same time, they've got enough personnel uh, to play it. Lawrence came into the ball game. Yes, they went after him on the touchdown the minute Randall went out. You know, you expect the quarterback on the other team to go after your replacement guy. Mm -hmm. And, And they did that and scored a touchdown in that position. But he's played a lot. He He's capable of playing. I thought Adelike, again, played a, a solid game in his position. Uh, Brooks did a great job uh, for the most part where he was. So, you know, they've got the parts. And, and I really like the linebacker play. I think their linebackers are, are really uh, the strength of this football team. And even with Simone Lawrence out, you know, Wilson's done a great job with that Will linebacker. Yeah, I know uh, people I talked to before Kyle Wilson got in the lineup, they were really excited to see him get his chances. Unfortunate it came uh, with a Simone Lawrence injury to do it. And again, people I've talked to have talked about the leadership of uh, Jovan Santos Knox in the middle there of that linebacking crew and, and how crucial he's been up uh, to that point. You know, this this I, w- I don't want to say the leadership's been tested on this team, but they have lost a lot of guys to injuries who would be considered leaders like Van Zyl. So it is a young football team. And I think that was evidenced when we saw Keandre Smith with the fumble. I mean, that's going to be a tough lesson that that's going to stick with a, with a young player for a long time. Yeah. The, the one you talk about was the last series of the ball game. Uh, you know, the, the key to teach these young guys is uh, don't struggle for that extra half yard. You know, you're in the grasp of the people. Get both hands on the football and don't be afraid to get down on the ground and live to fight another day. You know, it it so often happens, Louis, where uh, the guy is trying to make a play. You understand that. But he also has to be mature enough to know this is as far as I can go. You know, use the out of bounds, for example, as, as your friend. You catch the ball, you're in that area. Step out of bounds. Now you got a first down, you begin all over again. So it's a tough lesson to learn, but, uh, you know, it, it's one of those. And, and while we're talking receivers, give a shout out to Unger. I thought mm. Unger played a good ball game. Uh, you know, White had his normal uh, eight catches in the ball game, but Unger had six catches in that ball game. So, you know, he had to come in and play when Pappy White went out. Yeah, thrown into action uh, with the first team. And on the uh, the punt duty too, uh, you know he did have the one. I think he 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 fumbled with a little bit, but it was able to recover it. And uh, again, thrown into action there at that uh, that punt return role. And now, when when you talk about the punt return in this bye week, 
it is my hope that they bring in an absolute specialist. Mm -hmm. You need a specialist as a punt returner. It's not one you can do uh, by alternating people back there and see who can do it. You bring in somebody or you get somebody off that injured list that can return the football. Yeah. I, to, I mean, to that point, this, the, especially this team, this, this regime of, uh, uh, you know, the, the Scott Mitchell, we've, we've seen that that specialist has always been such a crucial part of this team. Even last year, Frankie Williams was that guy while playing a spectacular on DB. I, I don't want to say, Let's look to next season because there is still a lot to play for. But this bye week for the Cats, what would your advice be to the players uh, after a tough loss, where they are in the standings? I mean, what, what would your advice be as a coach? Well, number one, you can still knock Saskatchewan uh, out of the playoff race. You've got to win that ball game. Yeah. That's the next, next step that you've got to take. From then on, things may be out of your hands a little bit. But in your hands this week on the 7th of October, Saskatchewan comes to town and they're the crossover team. So you've got to be able to beat that team. I would concentrate all of my efforts right now on winning that football game. Now, having said that, uh, I'm not in favor of, of starting a rebuild in the middle of your season. I, I really believe that you've got to find out from these players who is going to be your number one guys and who is going to step up under adversity. So uh, I, uh, rebuild's not in my mind yet. Uh, October 7th, you bring it up. Of course, that will be a fantastic night because uh, we will be adding another name to the uh, level of honor and uh, Danny McManus. Uh, Coach, I know you have a, a role on the committee and, uh, and, and help uh, make those sort of decisions. Uh, why was Danny Mack the right fit uh, this year? And uh, what else are you looking forward to come October 7th? Well, you know, on the 6th, they're going to have at Carmen's, they're going to have a big dinner for uh, uh, the honoree, uh, Danny McManus. To me, Danny McManus, when he came into Hamilton, it was a real downtime for Hamilton 96 97 uh, season. Then, then you bring in Danny McManus in 98. He rejuvenated the entire community. The community saw somebody they could rally around because he was a winner. Now, he had people around him like Flutie, uh, Darren Flutie as a receiver who could help him. He had a, you know, a good secondary group uh, of players that were in there, Morielli, Hitchcock, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, it was the, the one guy that you really needed uh, was the quarterback, and Danny McManus was that quarterback. And you saw the fans in 98 and 99 come back to that stadium and come back with conviction that they were going to be winners. Yeah, and uh, of course, winners they were uh, in 1999 and uh, should make for a fantastic evening. And uh, Coach, I'm sure we'll, we'll talk a bit more about Danny Mack uh, in, in the days to come ahead of that, but I appreciate you taking some time uh, on this Monday uh, with me. Thank you. Okay, Louis, talk to you again. And my thanks to Coach Sal for joining me today. My thanks to you as well, as we uh, always do appreciate it. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode of this show or any of the other great shows we offer here on the Tie Cats Audio Network, including a brand new episode of CFL This Week as Bob O'Neill dives into the biggest topics on the weekend that was across the league. Uh, that'll do it for us today. We are back tomorrow and uh, really excited about tomorrow's show as I'm going to be joined by 1972 Great Cup champion Tony Gabriel. So make sure you join us then. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, for now, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. Back tomorrow, same time, same place here on the Ticats Audio Network. I'm Louis Butko. Hoping you have a great day. Ticats today can be heard every weekday, and we would like to hear from you. Email us at gameday at ticats.ca. Have a question or an opinion? We want to hear it. That's gameday at ticats.ca. Subscribe to the Ticats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.